What's up, YouTube? This is Fleshbox, and I'm doing a little bit of video here. It's two in one night, even. Uh, this one is a special video for Doc M. He posted a video using his new uh, Blue Yeti microphone for the first time and was asking, uh, you know, if, if everyone thought it sounded good and, and if anyone had any tips and whatnot. And I've got a little bit of experience with uh, microphones and so forth. So I figured I'd uh, go ahead and give him. Uh, just do a little video here for him and give some pointers out. Now, the Blue Yeti is a condenser mic. So with uh, condenser mics, you can get a really, really good sound out of them. Uh, like right now, I'm, I'm not using a, uh, a Blue Yeti or a Blue Snowball or any of the Blue USB condenser mics. I'm actually using a Behringer C3, but it is a uh, condenser mic. The only difference is mine is an XLR mic plugged into a Focusrite uh, USB audio interface and then into the computer from there. Essentially, I have, uh, you know, uh, audio interface instead of a USB cable. So the, the basics are essentially the same for either one of them. So, uh, the first thing you want to know with a condenser mic is that there is a, a large, um, uh, variance in the sound quality that you get based on even just proximity. So like right now, I'm right up against the microphone. My my nose is touching my pop filter right now. So we, we get a lot more of the low end, that bassiness, and you get kind of that um, news radio talk show kind of a sound out of the voice. <clears throat> and uh, I, I personally kind of prefer that uh, just uh, because, because my you know, previous experience on the radio. I kind of like that radio voice sound, but, uh, you can also move the microphone a little further away. Like right now, I'm, uh, I'm now about uh, six inches away from the microphone. And of course you can tell it's, it's gotten significantly quieter, but the tonal quality of my voice has changed pretty dramatically as well. You're not getting near as much of the low end bass of my voice. And uh, the, it, it sounds a little bit more roomy, a little bit more airy than, uh, than it did when I was right up on the mic like this. So that's, that right there is, uh, is one way to adjust the sound. Uh, you can also, uh, change the sound, the tonal quality of a microphone by rotating the microphone. Uh, the, the capsule inside of a condenser mic is actually two sided. So you can come around to the back side, and right now I'm talking right into the back side of the capsule, and you notice the, the sound changed pretty dramatically. And of course, I don't have the pop filter, so uh, it's got a little bit more of the plosives there, but uh, you know, that's just an example. You know, you can talk end on, and that changes it, and whatnot. So you can play around with uh, the positioning of the microphone and get a, a, a feel for. Uh, how you prefer the sound. Um, I'm not personally familiar with the Yeti, but Blue has a pretty good habit of making their microphones pretty configurable. So you might look and see if you have a cutoff switch on it. Uh, when you're when you're right up close on the mic, like I am right now, you if you have a filter switch, you might set that to a low cutoff. Uh, that'll cut down some of the the low end bass a little bit. Um, you might have a DB cut and generally from what I've found for, um, for recording on a computer, you don't generally need that, um, at all. And you don't really want it because it'll make your input too quiet. Um, again, I don't have any experience with the USB microphone, so that may be different. Blue may have some uh, good USB drivers, um, to, uh, to, you know, make that work a little bit better. My audio interface, I basically don't have any... Uh, configurable, um, you know, input settings in Windows for it. I basically control it all through the uh, the breakout box that uh, the mic plugs into, that then plugs into the computer through USB. Um, but yeah, that's uh, a, obviously having like outboard processors and effects is is a lot better because then you can do real time. Uh, equalizing, compression, gating, and whatnot. Uh, I don't have anything like that set up yet. My plan is ultimately to get a little four-channel mixer and uh, plug the mic into that, use the inserts for outboard processing, and then go into the computer through the Focusrite. But uh, with the USB, I think you're pretty limited in that respect uh, to you know only 
being able to you know add effects and processes uh, after the fact. I don't know if there's any inline effects for the USB stuff. Uh, you might check, and maybe Blue has something. Maybe ha they have some drivers or whatnot that allow you to plug in some uh, VST plugins or whatnot to give you real time, which would be ideal because then you don't have to worry about messing with things um, after the fact in post. But the, the way I record is actually uh, through Audacity. I record all of my audio through there rather than in Fraps. And then after the fact, I go through, I add a little bit of compression, uh, a little bit of EQ just to, uh, to you know, bring the, the vocals out just a little bit. And that's uh, what I want to touch on next. Um, in listening to your video, your audio is pretty low. I, it wasn't necessarily quiet, but it didn't come out of the mix very well. And that's because it wasn't quite equalized properly. What you want to go ahead and do is... Uh, add just a little bit of a 1 to 2 kilohertz uh, bump in your EQ, and that'll help bring your voice out just a little bit. It'll, it'll kind of make it pop. It'll give it presence without making it too loud. So you don't have to worry about your voice just being incredibly loud and boomy over everything in order to be heard. But at the same time, it can be heard clearly. And uh, that's... that's uh, that's kind of an important thing right there is equalizing. I don't know uh, what uh, you can get away with uh, with the audio effects in Premiere, but I know that it does have equalizing, and I think it has uh, compression plugins for um, the audio stream, so you might play around with those. Um, uh, just adding a little bit of EQ, bump around 2K, 1 to 2K, and... Uh, a little bit of compression that'll make your voice you know sound a lot cleaner a lot clearer and given your vocal qualities i think it would be just about right for you um but uh that's that's probably the best the best tips i can give right there is the equalizing and uh if you can't do that through premiere or whatever video editor you use uh, go, you know, record your audio separately and then mix it in later. It makes it a little bit difficult when you're doing multiplayer stuff. Um, and I know you use Skype a lot. I've never recorded through Skype, so I don't know if you can exclude your own audio from Skype from recording in Skype. But uh, if you can, that may be an alternative for you. Um, let's see, what else is there? Yeah, well, I can't really think of any other just easy plane tips. A lot of the, a lot of the really higher end stuff kind of requires more advanced equipment. But um, the microphone you've got is definitely a good microphone. Um, again, placement is very important. You want to be consistent with the placement. Uh, I guess the Yeti has a little mic stand that comes with it. I don't know how big that is, so you might play around with that. See if you can position it so it's it's nice and close. Um, I think I think Beef uses a Yeti as well, and he gets pretty good audio from his. So uh, you might talk with him about what he does for it. I personally I use a Rode PSA1 uh, boom arm for my microphone, which makes it nice because I can I can move it out of the way. You know, when I'm not using my microphone, I can just you know, move it up over my my, my uh, monitors, and it's out of the way, and uh, it works out pretty nice. So that that might be another option for you. Also, uh, the Rode is a little bit more expensive. There's a couple cheaper ones. Uh, I went ahead and went with the Rode because it was pretty well reviewed. But um, definitely, it's uh, another thing. Pop filter. It sounded like you had a pop filter, um, but. Uh, if you don't have a pop filter, if you're using the default, the, the pop filter that Blue usually includes, which is like a two-inch circle, um, you'd probably be better served picking up a, a larger pop filter. Like, I've got a, just a cheap Nady uh, MPF6 is the model number. I think it costs like 15 or $16 on Amazon. Um, it works out really nice. You know, it's got a clamp and a nice long... Uh, stem on it that's flexible so you can position it and it's uh, you know it's a six inch diameter screen so you can kind of move around a little bit around the microphone without ever coming off of that pop filter and you don't have to worry about you know nostril pops and stuff like that if if uh, that's a thing for you 
But anyways, this is uh, 10 minutes long here, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. And I hope that uh, I hope that this helps out and gives you some uh, some good tips.